Hello Laddingtons, I'm checking in from Ulthuan with some Warhammer lore and I want to dedicate this video to my supporter Jan from the Czech Republic who so kindly gifted the latest Warhammer Total War 2 DLC to me and with a message that he is in a period of mourning because his grandfather has just passed away and um, the grandfather took um, you know an active role in his upbringing so uh, and he's also said that my let's plays have um, increased his mood a bit so um, yeah this is for you Jan stay strong so in the end of the video or the second half of the video I will show the actual gameplay and uh, have a look at the DLC but I thought to just check in from uh, this extremely cozy and uh, comfy place to just talk a bit about Warhammer, uh, especially a character that I found very epic when I was like 14 and that's Eltharion, the blind swordmaster. And first and foremost also to everyone who perhaps are more interested in the political side of things that I talk about. If you wonder how I um, you know, reject black pills in regards to Sweden and uh, Europe and uh, North America etc. Uh, if I feel black pilled, I just uh, delve into some Warhammer and I feel better. Um, you need that sort of you know, positive escapism every once in a while. So uh, yeah, that is um, how I deal with uh, that. So anyway, about Eltharion, the Swordmaster, he has been retconned, so he isn't blind anymore. But when I first saw him, um, yeah, I was like 14 years of age and it was a short story that appeared in White Dwarf along with some rules for the tabletop game and um, he was blind, he had been blinded by some dark elves and um, in the short story he led a raid on Nagaroth, so the land of the dark elves and what I thought was so epic with it was that he actually went on the offensive because in uh, Warhammer lore especially in the a bit older lore, the High Elves are always on the back foot and the Dark Elves are always the ones who are invading. So I thought, nice, here's a guy who's taking the fight to the enemy, since I you know, identified more with the High Elves than the Dark Elves. So that was my impression, good impression of Eltharion, the blind swordmaster. And also purely aesthetically speaking, a blind swordmaster whose other senses are so keen that he can keep up with a um, master Dark Elf Assassin, Shadow Blade. Um, so that is the short story there. I also I had a High Elf army, decently painted. I sold every model except for Eltharion, the Blind Swordmaster. So I still have it in metal. Uh, I might paint it someday. If you have been following me on Instagram, you've seen that I posted a bit of my Warhammer painting. Um, quarantine painting since I've you know had some extra time to to do it something I've missed for a very long time um, so yeah one day I might paint that model too but as I said they retconned the story so he's no longer blind and he appears in the latest DLC as Eltharion the Grim who's um, yeah a fully functional elf who rides atop a griffon so we'll have a look at him in um, in a little bit but otherwise in regards to the game itself and to and to Warhammer lore especially when it comes to the high elves always found it very very motivating you don't see any slave morality heroes it's very Tolkien-esque in that sense we'll also have a look at another hero who um, is named Emerick he's a prince he's a bit arrogant a bit proud but it's not something, he, he doesn't come from a position of being the underdog and that is so refreshing to see. I talked about it more in my video on Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and I prefer the Lord of the Rings heroes because they don't come from that position of downtroddenness. Um, the High Elves, you know, they are, they are anything but. Then in regards to the game Warhammer Total War 2, it's extremely good on every level. You know, the tactical challenge, the strategy challenge, it, uh, yeah, you have to think. I play on Legendary as well and uh, every single move you have to think quite a bit so you don't do any mistakes because you can't turn back time in uh, that game. So very challenging, very 
rewarding as well. The sensation also in it, you know, really captures that sense of epicness, of exploration, of adventure. It's perfect for, you know, gaining some motivation to set the pace high in um, in your other endeavors as well. So now always full training motivation when I think of the aesthetic elven heroes. Same thing with exploring, um, you know, if you game a lot, you must use it to you know, motivate yourself to do things out in nature as well, so you can get another appreciation. So if I look around me here at this extremely beautiful place, I have a deeper appreciation of it. So anyway, let's get into the game, and if you aren't interested in the game itself, you can stop watching the video now if you want. I won't hold it against you, but uh, for anyone else who wants to have a look at the new DLC, the new heroes, Perma Bulking, Grom and uh, Imrik and uh, Eltharion, the retconned Eltharion, you can um, keep watching. So to give you an example, I am technically not a blind sword master who trains with a sword, but you know, I found this epic place here, secluded, um, full of life, I can feel the earth goddess Gaia, I can feel her presence, it feels good, do some shadow boxing or do some sort of training. So you have these epic visions you get from you know, certain culture, then you apply it in some way. So I can use envision, so I can use envision something epic, do it right here, and um, yeah, it uh, becomes a good time. So uh, try it out. Now, I don't know if our esteemed Bronze Age pervert endorses me talking about the Earth Goddess because, as many of you know, he likes to talk about the patriarchal sky father, sky god, conquering the more matriarchal earth goddess worshipping individuals. But you know, I am uh, stuck in between. I also want to venerate mother earth. I don't want to sound like a hippie or anything, but uh, you know, just looking around me, I'm, I'm full of love for our dear earth we have here. Of course, no disrespect to any of the sky fathers that uh, are up there, but uh, yeah, just throwing it out there for good measure. So, also admire my traps. Quite uh, thick and juicy in all actuality. Hello again, Laddingtons. Welcome back to good old Total War. Fun fact, I have actually recorded Total War Let's Plays since 2014, so I thought it would be appropriate to continue this fine tradition. Now this won't be a full Let's Play episode, I just wanted to show you the uh, new DLC. And we see some new fine artwork here as well on the left side. Some elven architecture. Goals for Europe when we have won the culture war, we'll build like this. And on the um, right side we have some goblin, and orc and goblin um, aesthetics. So anyway, I'll head on into the Eye of the Vortex I, here. Tyrion, heir of Anarium. And uh, we'll see all of these mad cunts. So um, yeah, new artwork here, or or somewhat new at least. So the new heroes Our are uh, Eltharion here. So the retconned version, and you can see his eyes there wide open. He is not blind. And he starts here in on the east coast, Ulthan, and he will... Um, fight against this Bloatmax Madcunt, Grom the Pounch. Um, yeah, he has taken the Bloatmaxing a bit too far, I'd say. He needs to get on a cut so he looks shredded for summer, so he can post-physique. 
So, uh, anyway, no rest, I no um, will probably play some sort of campaign with this guy at some stage. He has some different new game mechanics as well. Then the second new is Imrik. Absolutely aesthetic. And I said Imrik because that's the Swedish way to pronounce it, but it's Imrik. So with uh, an English I instead of two E's. But um, that is another topic. The pronunciation of Swedish E's. So anyway, you see him looking quite aesthetic. Starting off here in, um, well, Africa basically. It's not Africa, it's Arabic, but you know, it's sort of based on um, the real world. So he has some ultra aesthetic dragon princes, a sun dragon, some white lions, absolutely epic unit if there ever was on the white lions. So anyway, some few, some different game mechanics here. I am none can best me in battle. None can best me in battle. So you see, a bit arrogant, uh, cocky, but you know, he, uh, he deserves it. So we're just gonna get into the campaign here to have a look at uh, this guy. Long have I led the great host of Kalador. Now the Phoenix King has sent me to the Southlands to help restore the great vortex created by my forebear, the great Kalador Dragon Tamer. The bowmen of Orion dwell nearby, fellow elves of the Azre, who could prove strong allies. Should we choose to help them? Locations of arcane power are close. Where we can gather the wave fragments we need. Some appear uninhabited. Others may require us to remove the primitive creatures that inhabit them. Further afield are ancient ports, once under Asur control. We could reclaim them for better communications back to Oswan. But must be wary that these deserts are the realm of undead kings, who would sooner go to war than have us annex their lands. Tyrion and Teclas may consider themselves the foremost defenders of the Vortex, but they shall soon see that the bloodline of the House of Calador still runs hot with dragon fire. All right, highly epic. So, what we have here. Is our, uh... The undead kings are a paltry threat, but for the Vortex's sake, we can take no risks. Driving them from their tombs will not be enough. We must claim their nearest necropolis. That sounds like a reasonable course of action. So anyway, we have our gallant hero, Prince Imrik here, or Imrik, should I say. And uh, he starts with a uh, trusted horse. You can get a dragon later on. And uh, here we have some Tomb Kings. And for anyone who isn't familiar with Warhammer lore, Tomb Kings are basically undead Egyptians. So you have here, um, yeah, basically ancient Egypt. You have the Nile here and uh, some surrounding lands. So what I will do then Warriors. is strike up... We'll initiate an alliance with our esteemed wood elf uh, friends here and then just go about conquering these uncivilized peoples around me. So, uh, yeah, we can actually head into My fails me. battle to, to see how it looks. Um, it can be a good, good idea for uh, this episode. So I'm just gonna head into it directly. Uh, okay, I won't actually because you can see it's the yellow bar is our strength versus their strength So it would be a very one-sided battle so I can just out resolve that um, And we can what can we do? Ha, we can ransom captives and we get some influence per turn Boom, I will actually do it. Influence is always good. So anyway, as I was mentioning in regards to that sense of epicness and adventure, you can see here we're stranded with our high elf expedition in the middle of the desert and you have some jungles and some mountains and different races, etc. Really captures the uh, heroic sensation of it and then an untamed ocean, of course. So anyway, I will actually leave it there because 
time is of the essence. I don't have as much time as I used to, so I can't make all too much of these videos. But uh, yeah, anyway, I hope this um, whole special video was uh, enjoyable to watch and perhaps motivating. And, and if you're playing something, you might as well play Warhammer Total War. It's uh, a truly great game. So anyway, thank you for watching. XXO, boom.